Good morning, I'm Muriel Bowser. I'm the mayor of Washington, D.C. I'm in the John A. Wilson building, providing an update on the district's uh, response to COVID-19. Uh, and I'm joined by members of my cabinet. Um, very briefly, I want to, um, to take questions today, um, any questions related to phase two. On Friday, I issued a mayor's order um, outlining how the district would enter phase two of our reopening, uh, which uh, is effective uh, today. Uh, so we want everybody to go to coronavirus.dc.gov to see all of the changes, the slow opening of different activities across the district. We want to continue to reiterate uh, that it is imperative um, that DC residents um, use good judgment and follow social distancing guidelines um, for any of the new activity that they are participating in. Uh, we also want to re reiterate to anyone um, that they can get a test uh, if they need a test at locations throughout the district during the day uh, and into the evening. And you can see those locations also at coronavirus.dc.gov. I will only um, spend some time now talking about some new district services that will be available as part of phase two. Uh, namely, uh, DMV service centers will open um, for in-person services at all of its locations, all of the DMV service centers um, beginning tomorrow. Uh, I want to be clear, however, that you need an appointment to go in person to the DMV. So you will need to go to dmv.dc.gov uh, to make an appointment. Uh, the DMV uh, currently uh, throughout, uh, throughout our pandemic response has been using appointments. Um, and so there are many people who already have an appointment. And if you need to make an appointment um, for service, uh, you may go to dmv.dc.gov. These are the things that need to be done in person. Uh, anything else you can handle online. First time license and real ID conversions, first time title and registrations for a vehicle, and knowledge testing. Um, so also opening uh, will be adjudication services, the Brentwood CDL office, the inspection station, and the self-service kiosk. So once again, visit dmv.dc.gov. I also want to mention um, that you don't have to rush. Everybody doesn't have to go at the same time. All uh, documents expiring on or after March 1st are still valid and will be at valid uh, at least through mid-September, and that's 45 days after the current um, end of the public health emergency. So please skip the trip. Everybody doesn't need to go in person. You need to go in person if you're doing a license and real ID conversion or if you're registering your vehicle for title um, and registration for the first time and the knowledge tests. Everything else um, at the DMV can be done uh, online. So please uh, review uh, the website. Also, uh, today, our opening are our playgrounds across the district. Uh, so I'm told that um, if, there, if those playgrounds aren't unlocked, they will be by the end of today. Our staff, our DPR staff, has been working um, to make them uh, open. And uh, the reminder to parents and caregivers is to um, frequently clean uh, uh, minors, children, and your hands uh, and faces. So frequent hand washing or use of hand sanitizer um, is appropriate uh, for use of a playground. Uh, so with that, we'll take any questions. Questions, yes. Uh, 
Nothing was, re I'm, I'm not sure what you're referring to as being removed, um, but yes, there was a reset of the peak. Okay, I'm looking at the data right now, it's not on the chart, but can we spread chart? Is there a reason that that wasn't? I'll have to check about that, but there was a reset in the peak on Saturday. Okay. Yes. Mayor, so the president has announced that he wants to have the July 4th celebration on the mall. Um, what's your, your take on that? We've asked you about it before, and uh, there were some questions about trying to limit people down on the mall. What, what's your plan now uh, for this event? Well, as you know, it's a federal event, and it will be on federal property. And I expect that some version of the July 4th celebration will happen. Are, are you going to, you said previously that you would work with the National Park Service, I think you said, on those plans. But do you have any plan whatsoever to try and limit people from coming in to the city? I don't know what you mean by that. Would there, you back when they were trying to keep people away from the cherry blossom. Roads were blocked to keep people from going down there. Do you, think, do you see a similar kind of situation? I expect that there will be some traffic mitigation um, that, will, that either the federal government will put in place or we will help them with for traffic mitigation. But there's typically traffic mitigation around um, because there's a parade typically. There won't be a parade today. So I would expect um, pretty significant traffic limitations. Have there been in discussion with uh, the Park Service or the U.S. Park Police in trying to limit a crowd on the mall? Uh, I have had conversations with uh, the Secretary of the Interior. I can't say that we're entirely clear what the scope of the event will be at this time, um, but those conversations will continue. All right, and then just to follow up on that, back when the uh, flyover happened with the Blue Angels and the uh, Air Force, people were asked not to go down to the mall, but they did anyway. Uh, you had a very large crowd down there, and I don't recall there being a spike at that time. So would you still be concerned, though, if all of a sudden you get 100,000 people showing up on the mall? Yes, I absolutely would. I don't know that... Those are the estimated crowd numbers. You mean from the flyover? I mean from the 4th of July events. Oh, okay. Although I, I don't know off the top of my head if we've had crowds that size. Any other questions? Yes, Sam. Uh, Mayor, when you, uh, you talked about the rec centers opening, of course we have the summer job program. Playgrounds. Playgrounds. Outside, yep. But, uh, well, you got the summer job program. I'm just curious, will some of these young people be working there or any idea of you know, what, what? Uh, The Department of Parks and Rec does have a summer jobs program. If you're asking me, will there be in-person or all virtual, I'm not sure, um, but they do have a pretty robust summer jobs um, component that they um, use uh, summer youth for, for programming. So I know that those youth will be um, certainly considered as part of um, any in-person opportunities that we have. Yes, Mark. Uh, can we go back and get some clarification on the metrics for phase two? Because sure. Because now I'm more confused than I was before. I don't know why. What's confusing you? Tell me. Let me, let me help clarify if I can. So, if Saturday we reset to 11, mm -hmm. before that, the website said we had clinched phase two metrics. We had, and uh, we, I think Friday made 15 days, um, and then the data reset on the, what or 14 days. I think Saturday would have been the 15th day, um, and the, the data reset to 11. To 11. So how many sustained days do we have now? I think 13 days. How, how, and, and, and what about contact tracing? Are we where we're supposed to be according to your metrics for contact tracing? Yes, we are. Um, the last day that we have um, that has been um, confirmed by DOH and part of what we have um, reported is 100% first time, uh, first contacts with positive cases. Um, and I think that number has been over 90% for four or five days. Okay, so then how do we go, if we're at 13 today, yeah. I don't understand if we needed to have to be at 14, how we can go into phase two at 13 with the 
We're, we're going into it, Mark, because we achieved the 14 days, um, and that's the metric. And we always know that we could have um, different experiences with the data. We always know that, and we have the ability to go up and down. Um, so it is my decision that it's, it wouldn't be worth it to wait a day uh, after we have uh, announced the start date on this, this Monday. Yes. Uh, I just have a question about the church limit. I know they're allowed to have uh, around 100 people in, in their, inside for services. Um, why are churches allowed or places of worship allowed to have more people than the, the limit on mass gatherings of 50 people? Um, we we had received um, a number of waiver requests uh, for churches, and uh, all of those kind of hovered around um, 100. And so we think that's kind of an outside number for most um, for most churches. Um, and it, we think that, I think that it is better to deal with it up front to say that you can either have 50% of your capacity or a max of 100 people, whichever is fewer. Why, but why, if the, the limit on mass gatherings is at 50, why can places of worship have 100 people? I just told you. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I don't know how else to answer you. I told you that uh, I, I frankly think that um, that that is appropriate. Yes. Uh, you're talking about clubs like Blues Alley. Are they open as, uh, as part of phase two? Clubs are not uh, open other than if they're food serving. So if they serve some food, they can have live performances? No, they can serve food. And anything else would require a waiver. And we haven't issued any waivers for what live performances. So that's probably a phase three thing? Is that what you're suggesting? Or we'll... Well, it's not in phase two, Sam. <laughs> I wasn't suggesting anything other than it's not in phase two. Well, you said with a waiver. I mean, is anybody going to be wavered to have live performances and such, such things? That, that hasn't happened at this stage. Mayor, yes. Um, Let me get to Julie. I don't think she has, has had a chance. Um, I wanted to ask about the uh, statue of General Pike that was taken down. Yep. Um, some people have asked. I know it's on federal land, but people have asked questions like, you know, if that was the Lincoln Memorial being vandalized, would DC police step in to help? I wanted to give you a chance to respond to that and also to respond to the president who mentioned you again at this rally this weekend. Um, I, I, I want to be clear that we don't think any destruction of property is um, something that should happen in the district. And regardless of how you feel about the statue. Um, do you think DC police should have stepped in in that situation? Um, I think that they made the call on the ground uh, that they thought was appropriate in, in calling the park police, and uh, uh, we believe that the park police would handle it. Yes. Uh, could I take another run at Sophie's question? You can. And maybe Dr. Nesbitt could help. But why is it safe for 100 people to gather in a church, but not 100 people to gather but only 50 people together in any other circumstance. Why? Well, that's not exactly the case because uh, the, what the requirements say is that 50% of a retail establishment, and it doesn't have a number cap, uh, can operate. Or 50% of a restaurant uh, can operate and doesn't uh, have a number cap. So the restriction on churches is actually different than other indoor establishments in that it is still, regardless of their capacity, there's still a number cap. More than a hundred. Yes. So the the requirement and um, to the point of the earlier question is not more expansive. It's more more. Some would say a church would say uh, it's more restrictive.
My understanding is that there may now be a discussion within uh, the council members of massaging that um, body worn camera section of it. That this they may change some of that based on your comments and others. That there's unforeseen consequences that could come out of that with the 72 hours and releasing officers' names. Are you aware of discussions around? Honestly, that? Paul, I haven't had that discussion um, with any of the members of the council as yet. Um, that's not to say that members of my team haven't, um, but I'm going to be this week making just some touch base um, contacts with the members of the council, and I'm sure that will come up. I haven't suggested anything specific. As, as I uh, mentioned, I just suggested that we make sure we have enough time to, to look at carefully any consequences, as well-intentioned as all of us are. Sometimes there are unintended consequences, as you say. All right, and then do you have any comment on the police union survey that was released last week? Um, I only have uh, looked at uh, some reporting out there about it. I don't think I find anything surprising about it. Um, we have, over the course of the last five years, uh, looked at how you uh, recruit and, retrain and retain good officers, um, and during that time have been able to measure um, job satisfaction. And you've reported many, many times over how do we keep police officers? Why do police officers leave? What type of benefits? What do they need to see? Why do they go to this department versus that department? So this is not a new discussion on uh, ways to recruit and retain the best officers. Yes, sir. Uh, any, can you give us any indication of what phase three metrics might look like and when we, I mean, I know phase two is only hours old. Yes. <laughs> But can you give us any idea when people might expect that we might get close to phase three? I can't um, say that, but I, I will say, and this is my non-medical um, or epidemiological informed opinion, I should say trained um, opinion, is that we're adding a lot of activity right now. And so we went from phase zero, which was everybody staying at home, to um, phase one, which really slightly turned on activity, also to having unforeseen large mass gatherings, um, to turning on a, a lot of activity. So I, I, I think people should regard phase two um, as moving around a lot more. So what that means is we have to have confidence that we could be ready um, for a spike in cases, that we can um, be assured that our level of testing is adequate, which I am very, very pleased, and I want to thank my entire team for working hard. Uh, we knew in phase one that we would uh, expand and opening, open up testing in more places than we had before, and we see people taking advantage of it. Um, so people knowing where they can get tested, um, following social distancing guidelines strictly, not going crazy because you, uh, we've turned on this activity, and also remembering that the virus is still circulating, uh, not just in our city, but all around our region. Um, so know uh, that as you go out uh, in starting to slowly turn your life on, you can encounter the virus any place. Um, so you have to be very, um, very careful and get tested if you uh, think you need a test and then isolate. Yes? Will the Department of Health be conducting an analysis of how phase one impacted the transmission and also the protests? And when can we expect maybe a report on that? A report on phase one? Yeah, and its effect, like its impact on uh, community transmission and spread of the coronavirus and including the protests as well? Well, we report on that each day. I'm not sure what else you want to see, um, but uh, I can ask Dr. Nesbitt to speak to that. Thank you. Uh, I'd caution you against requesting a special report on any particular activities contribution to our cases. I think I've spoken to about that um, uh, at length. Uh, what our charge is, is to, as we have cases, is to try as best as we can to identify that individual's uh, specific exposure. 
as we identify um, exposures that are linked or exposures that are common, we uh, will advise the public to avoid those particular risks. Uh, so we'd be more than happy to share that as we identify those shared risks. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to follow up on that. Do you have any so far that you've realized are significant risks, including the uh, As we have stated here before, um, we see our biggest risks are associated with individuals who are in congregate settings. Uh, we have not seen other trends yet emerge. Uh, and so, we'll, again, as we begin to have more in depth contact tracing and we can identify our more common sources for individuals, we'd be happy to disclose that. Thank you. Oh, another. You get the last one. Okay. Um, as to speaking to co congregate settings, I was wondering if you could brief us on how the uh, coronavirus pandemic is taking place in the DC jail, whether that's being contained, and give us an update on that. Sure. Who is who wants to give that, Chris? Can I just ask for your specific question again? I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just curious if you can update us on the, the spread of coronavirus in the DC jail and how uh, that's being. Sure. So um, our jail, as well as uh, our other congregate settings, um, we're continuing to do testing um, throughout those settings on a regular basis uh, to so that we can understand exactly where we are. We've seen cases coming down. The numbers have come down. Our use of isolation and quarantine across the board has come down. Um, so we're moving in a positive direction. We're going to continue to do the testing and hoping that we keep in that direction. Mr. Gilder, quick question. You had five hotels you were operating at one point. Is that is that still the same situation? Uh, no, it's not, Sam. We're actually down in our isolation quarantine. We're down to uh, two hotels, and we should be down to one uh, this week for sure. Uh, and then we have another two that we are using for um, those that are in uh, congregate settings that are more vulnerable to the disease, so either by age or by pre-existing condition or a combination of the two, uh, where we've put folks to make sure that they've gotten appropriate social distancing uh, in their living. Uh, so we have two hotels that have that, and we'll have one by the end of the week that's doing isolation and quarantine. So basically from five hotels to three? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. okay. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe.